Thunder Junction pre-release weekend is happening now. I went to my LGS yesterday to play uh, the sealed event. It was fantastic. I had a great time. I highly recommend... Wait. Uh, oh, shit. I almost forgot. Forgive me, please. You ready? There we go, now I'm nice and flavorful. All right, so like I was saying, uh, you know, pre-release weekend was this weekend for, uh, for Thunder Junction. Honestly, it's a fantastic set. Uh, my first impressions of it were very good. Plot seems like an amazing mechanic. Spree seems really fun. Saddle seems, I didn't see too much of Saddle to be perfectly honest with you. There was like a couple bounties at the uh, event I was at and, and nobody ended up getting there with it. Maybe I saw somebody saddle like one time, but it wasn't really meaningful. Um, but other than that, I would say it's really, really powerful. You didn't really feel that, you know, there were like too many legendaries, but I don't think you'd run into that at a sealed event. Um, but I will say, <laughs> if you are doing anything, and we're going to go over the deck I played. I, I have it all set out right here. But uh, if you are going to play anything, if you're still planning on going, if there's an event today or tomorrow, uh, stay away from the low to the ground decks. <laughs> That, is, that did not work for me. What ran the floor at my LGS, it was all stompy, all, you know, big, mean. I had some guy who had two Terror of the Peaks, and I was like, oh, geez. You know, had an opportunity to get rid of it, but classic, I had three life and only target spells. So, but all in all, super, super fun set. Um, you know, had a great time where I was at Kingpin Comics. If you're uh, from Buffalo, great store if you haven't tried it out. Um, yeah, ended up getting some pretty cool pulls, nothing crazy. Definitely saw some sweet mana drains pulled. Um, uh, somebody got me with a contagion engine. It almost felt like, it, it felt like a way worse massacre worm if I were to be completely honest, but it was cool to see somebody actually play a, one of those. Uh, I think, was that one, one of the like big news one, or is that like the big score or whatever? Ah, who knows, but it was a cool card to see. And to be perfectly honest with you, I thought, you know, every card that you pull being legal would kind of break it. And I'm sure in some situations that's happened because I'm, I think there's a Mind Slaver lock in this uh, format, which is kind of crazy. But um, for me, for my situation, it was a very, um, it was a very enjoyable experience and I didn't feel uh, like I was, you know, kind of left in the lurch or, you know, no feels bad moments for me. And I even played against somebody who was playing a Simic deck and actually got like the original Oko and, and had a mana drain as well. So I, I didn't have any feels bad moments, but if you did, let me know in the comments. But also let me know what your opinions are in the comments and I'd love to go over it with you and, and see how everybody feels about the set. But honestly, spoiler season was great. Um, I had a lot of hype. Uh, obviously, I made a pretty, you know, uh, excited video on it and went into my, you know, LGS for the pre-release and it held up, to be perfectly honest with you. So, you know what, without any further ado, let's hop into the deck I played uh, so you guys could roast me. I thought it was pretty cool when I built it and then I saw it play and I was like, oh my god, this deck can't win. <laughs> so, let's get into it and it'll be really fun. All right, so here's my deck. Um... To be perfectly honest with you, you're probably looking at it now and like, uh, you know, this is probably isn't the greatest thing in the world. But in the moment, I was opening up these cards and I saw these these three like came in two straight packs. And I'm like, oh, I just needed like one. I love the art. Like the art's incredible. This is sweet. This is awesome. And eh, this one's fine. But these two really, you know, flavor wise, I wanted to play with them. And I got to be honest with you from back in my old days of playing, you know, limited and jeez, it's going to date me. I think it's Oath of the Gatewatch. I remember that set being a, a, there were definitely some stompy decks, but I remember it being a lot lower to the ground. So that's kind of what I went off of. Uh, that was not what you should do. <laughs> Just, But it, it is what it is. So let me go through the deck here. Uh, 40 cards, obviously, and I ran 18 lands, 6 swamps, I believe, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 swamps, and three pl uh, 2 planes, and then I had this uh, desert, which I only got one desert in my color combinations. I kind of had a second deck that I could have built that would have given me like two of them, but the lands really didn't help me out, so that was kind of a bummer right off the rip. So let's just hop through it and... Um, and yeah, let's let's get to it. So for my one drops, I didn't really get much in the in you know 
that, that turn one play, which I wish I could have seen more. So it was more interaction. So I had these explosive derailments, which were an absolute game changer in this format. Although the four damage does seem a little light compared to another card I'm gonna show you coming down. Ooh, sorry about that, I have no idea what that was. So yeah, explosive derailments. Quick draw didn't end up doing much for me. Uh, target creature you control gets 1-1 one, one and first strike till the end of turn. Creatures your opponents control lose it. This deck was trying to commit crimes and you know the quick draw just didn't do anything. I thought it would maybe like do well as kind of like a, you know, uh, like those green like hex proof or indestructible spells for red, but it just didn't end up being that. So the last one was Restless Lackey and I gotta be honest, I could have actually won a match and I didn't read the card properly. So I actually had somebody down to one life. And like I said, I had the, you know, like the commit of crime uh, sort of uh, theme going. And I had the uh, Raven of Fell Omens, which if you commit a crime, your opponent loses a life, you gain a life. And I activated his second ability. I had a guy down to one life. I just needed a target spell because I had the Raven out. And I didn't draw a card, I just made a treasure token with this. So it's a feels bad moment there, misplay on my part, bummer, but what can you do? So <clears throat> we'll start off the top. Kind of what ran the deck, I ended up getting two of these Vladimir New Bloods. One of them was my foil, um, another I just pulled in a pack. And this ended up being a huge powerhouse. I actually got him to four counters a few times. And um, unfortunately, you know, people at spot removal, it dies to removal, but if you didn't, you know, I was playing against all Stompy decks. I didn't think I didn't think I was actually gonna have removal, so it ended up being a good card, but couldn't get me there at the end of the day. Um, this is the card I was talking about uh, before about those explosive derailments. This red red deal five is sweet, and it's gonna be awesome in standard, obviously because of uh, everybody's favorite card, Shieldred. I think we're gonna see a lot of that scorching shot. Um, this card here I wish I had more copies of because it was the absolute best card in the deck. I, could, I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. Flying, two costs, when you commit a crime, each opponent loses one life, you gain a life, and it happens each turn. So if you're playing at instant speed, you could do it on your opponent's turn. Did that a couple times. Got a couple you know, game wins out of it, but not, not any match wins. Um, and then I had this discerning peddler. You know, I red card draw the discard and, and draw a card. It's great when you have cards to this card, but it's not great late game and you draw it and it's just like a two, two for two, but it is what it is. It came in clutch sometimes, sometimes it didn't. Um, all right, so here's where we get to the meat and potatoes. We'll just cover these guys because they didn't play too much of a, I didn't, I just didn't draw it. Uh, but Vault Plunderer would have been great with the Raven of Fell Omens. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target player uh, draws a card and loses a life. Like I was hoping I would draw this uh, for that one game, you know, just to, hey, you draw a card and lose a life, and then I would have won the game, but it is what it is. But I did get some of the best removal, probably that's in the format, maybe? Um, Bedevil, just destroy, target creature, artifact, or planeswalker, great. Right in the colors, murder, you know, instant speed, removal. And then skewer the credits, sorcery speed, but when you're playing, uh, you know, um, like, a, like a commit a crime deck, it ended up working out really well for me. I ended up drawing it a lot, so it's, you know, it's only a one of in the deck, but ended up drawing it a ton. So, and it helped me a ton. My four drops, Rictus Robber didn't do much. This was a, this was a dumb include at the end of the day, but I'm gonna show off my, my mistakes. Never ended up plotting it. You know, it's a uh, plot's kind of a new thing for me. I know we're supposed to get used to it and, you know, try these mechanics, but that's just kind of me with new sets, unfortunately. When I see the new mechanic, I just kind of avoid it, but I definitely shouldn't have. But yeah, when he enters the battlefield, if a creature died this turn, create a 2-2 two -two blue-black zombie. Um, didn't end up being too much of a factor for me and just kind of ended up sitting there being a 4-3 blocker most of the time. This card's sweet. This card I highly recommend. Um, just a four-cost instant exile target creature. That's just great right off the rip. Great rate for limited and you get the extra bonus if you hit like something not great uh, with this, you know, a three cost or less, you get to surveil too. So I actually had three copies of this and I had another one in the sideboard. Honestly, honestly, I probably should have taken out probably one of the Rictus Robbers and just thrown in a third of that because there was so many cards that needed removal in this set. I did not, oh my God, I had somebody, I had somebody who had Bristly Bill and two, two Terror of the Peaks. Like, what can you do? 
Um, and then he also had that dragon that you plot and it's a 7-7 seven, seven, and it's minus one, one for each card in your hand. Like the guy's deck was stacked for like no reason. This card was sweet. I thought this was gonna be like, um, like Invoke Despair kind of, um, except you know, you get to choose the modes. Uh, you know, four cost, target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control rounded up, you know, add another two, opponent discards half the cards in our hand. I never ended up using that mode. I did activate twice though and make, make them sacrifice creatures and lose half their life total. That ended up being pretty cool. Had the Raven out. It ended up being pretty sweet. Um, Fell the Mighty. I thought I had the dual lands and everything like that, but to be perfectly honest with you, I drew it one time and didn't get any planes. So maybe that was on me for my mana base. My mana bases with limited or unfortunately my, my land base uh, making skills aren't that great, so I probably could have done a little better in that department. Um, and I thought this was just gonna be like, uh, <laughs> just like uh, like a secure the waste. And I thought this was just gonna be like the top end of the deck, carry me home. And at one point it actually did. Um, and I did get to pump like one, I got to pump the uh, uh, the Raven of Fell Omens up like a bunch of times with like four creatures. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but other than that, it didn't do anything too crazy. It is what it is. I had a great time at the event, but, uh, oh, and yeah, like I said, I went through my lands. But a few things I, I saw were cool. It doesn't feel like like I, you know, went into this event and I was like, oh my God, I'm just gonna get like slammed with like commander cards and like things are gonna be surprisingly broken um, in a limited format. Didn't feel that at all. Obviously, I told you about that guy's deck where he had all these bombs, but, you know, it is what it is. He he pulled them in the packs, fair and square. He just got a better deck. But um, but all in all, it was a very, very fun limited experience, and I highly recommend it. I'm going to definitely try a draft as well, um, even though I am self-admittedly the worst drafter in the world. Um, probably won't do great there, but now at least I know what kind of wins. Um, and yeah, I... But I, I honestly think this was an extremely fun event. I think it's going to be a very expensive set. And I know people are, you know, kind of saying that people are waiting for Modern Horizons and they're not going to focus on this set. I wouldn't listen to that too much because a lot of a lot of the vibe that I was getting in my LGS is that people are very, very happy with this set. And I mean, like people were cracking cases in there, like, like in between, <laughs> well, they were cracking boxes in between games, but like somebody opened a full case in the amount of time, you know, people were cracking like uh, collector boxes. I know it's like, you know, day one of being able to get it. But at the end of the day, if people are that excited to open it and they're enjoying the cards and they're not feeling like they're getting hosed as they're opening boxes, I think that's a really big win. And I think that's a really big win for a standard set. So all in all, I'm very excited for Thunder Junction. Had a great time playing it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, by the way, please consider subscribing, liking, disliking is totally fine. Throw your comments below. Roast my deck, seriously. I thought it was sweet when I first played it, and then game one I knew uh, it wasn't my day. So I ended up going 1-2 uh, with a bye. Ooh, I lost both my matches. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and didn't end up getting anything too sweet, but... Um, but yeah, so I had a great time nonetheless, even though I didn't do well. And uh, I think that's I think that's how you can tell you're like it's an actually like fun set to play is if you don't do well and you still have a good time. Um, and it's you know always always nice playing with good people. So shout out to Kingpin Comics if um, you know if anybody sees us in the Buffalo area, please uh, give them some love. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Have a great one.